Hi hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to welcome you to back to my channel. Today I am going to review the ZWO 533MC Pro camera. Now, what I've been looking for for a while is a camera to team up with my Celestron 6 SCT. And that's primarily because I wanted to have a rig that was set up primarily for galaxies, um, uh, star clusters, and smaller like planetary nebula, those types of things. The, also, I wanted to have it set up so that I could use it for outreach events. I've got a lot of kids that walk through my neighborhood, a lot of parents that walk through my neighborhood, and when I've got the Orion uh, ED80 set up uh, and I'm imaging with it, well, I can't let folks look through that. So I wanted to have something that I could maybe do a little bit of a live astronomy with, and also something that was a little bit better suited for these small objects. And uh, with the good folks, with the help of some of the good folks over at Agena Astro, I finally settled on the ZWO 533. And right now, I want to tell you a little bit about how I made that decision and then give you my review of this camera. Stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, before I go over and do some of the comparison and review of the camera, I want to explain to you how it was that I came to choose the ZWO 533. Now remember, I already own the ZWO 183MC Pro, and I use it primarily with my Orion ED80T. But I find that that wasn't as suitable, it wasn't as good of a combination when I put it over with my Celestron 6 SET. So I knew that there were three things that I really was looking for in a camera for that setup. Number one, I needed a little bit more sensitive camera. Now, the, you know, with the Celestron 6 SCT, it's not, uh, it's not got a lot of aperture to it. And so the, right away, I need a little bit more sensitive a camera to be able to pick up objects, dim objects, and those types of things. So what I was looking for to get it more sensitive was a larger pixel size. And I'll show you why, um, uh, give you comparisons of that in just a couple of seconds. So I was looking for a larger pixel size. Second of all, I know, know because I'm primarily going to be shooting deep sky objects with a little bit of lunar imaging thrown in here. I'm pr I wanted a tech cooled camera. It needed to be a cooled camera. That was an absolute. The other thing was I had to consider budget. And so as I narrowed those things down, looking at those criterions, I came down to two choices, either the ZWO294 or the 533. So what I want to do now is go over to the ZWO site, and I want to just do a little comparison of those cameras along with the 183 so you can kind of get in mind what I was looking at and what, why I picked the 533. Okay, to do a little bit of comparison work here, I went over to the ZWO website, and I went down to this little feature. Let me show you that again. Over on their homepage um, at astronomy-imaging-camera.com, if you go to compare ASI cameras, it will allow you to pick out cameras. So I've got the 183, so I put the 183 in here, and I wanted to compare that to the... Um, where is it here? Let me find it. I want to compare that to the um, 533 and also the 294, the ZWO 294. Um, right here. Okay, so I've got all three cameras uh, called up here. Now remember, uh, one of the main things I'm looking at here is pixel size. And you'll notice here, this is the camera I have. Um, it's got 2.4 micron pixel size. The 533 has 3.76, and the 294 is 4.63. So just on that, I was kind of leaning towards the uh, 294. I looked at that and I thought, man, I really like that. It, it gives me a little deeper uh, well capacity. 
But the more I looked into it, the more I began to lean towards the 533. And there are really a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is, as I was reading the reviews on the 533, people kept coming back over and over again to the fact that this camera has no amp glow. And I found that that is exactly true. That was something that really appealed to me, was having no amp glow. Now, let me say this. My 183 has amp glow in it, and it it I can I can um, um, process it out. I can deal with that with darks and flats, and it will process right out. But I also want to sometimes do uh, some outreach. So I want to set up and use SharpCap uh, with uh, EAA and just be able to show people a live view of an object. And that doesn't look so good if you've got a big you know bit of amp glow in there. So I was kind of thinking the 533 sounds pretty good. I kind of like that. And let me show you something here. I'm going to go over to Astro Pixel Processor for just a minute. And I'm going to show you two darks. Let me first of all start off by showing you this dark. This is from my 183. And you'll notice something here. Look at this. This is, this is the amp glow. Now let me go over and show you one of the darks from the 533. No amp glow whatsoever. So right away, I started liking that part and that feature in this particular camera. The other thing was, while there this does have a bigger pixel size, the 533 was a little bit less expensive. So when I started thinking about my budget, that factored in. And then I went over to Astronomy Tools. And this is what really synced it, cinched it for me. Astronomy Tools is a very helpful website that allows you to compare um, equipment. And so what I did was I went over here to their CCD suitability calculator. You can find that. Just go by the calculators. that have got all kinds of them here. Go to CCD suitability. You'll notice here I've entered in my Celestron 6 SCT. I put in my 0.63 uh, focal reducer uh, along with the ZWO 533 MC Pro. Now, you can select different scene conditions here. Uh, most of the time when I'm imaging, I, my best skies would be good scene. That's about as good as it gets here. I, I, once in a blue moon, I'll get exceptional scene. But normally, I'm shooting in either okay or good scene conditions. And you notice here, in good scene conditions, this camera and telescope setup really work well together. The ideal pixel size down here for good scene... Uh, is between 0.33 and 1 uh, pixel, okay? And, I, and, and this gives me, this combo gives me a 0.82 resolution. So in other words, I'm in, I'm in good shape here. Now, if I switch this to the 294, look what happens. With the 294, I'm a little bit undersampled, which isn't a terrible thing, but I kind of want the camera and the, and the, um, and the telescope equipment to match up well together under my scene conditions. So the, the pendulum swung even further to the 533. The combination of a, a little bigger pixel size than my 183, the, um, uh, the price, and then the fact that it was a little bit better suited. Then I went over and, and realized something. One of the features that you'll notice of, let me go back over here and show you something that's kind of weird about the 533. If you compare sensor sizes, you'll notice that 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 the 180, the 294, that's a rectangular uh, shaped um, sensor. This is a rectangular shaped sensor. But here you have a square. It's 11.31 millimeters by 11.31. But that's kind of weird. But then I went over to the astronomy tools and went to their uh, field of view calculator and just started saying, well, well, what would this look like if I started shooting things? Now, remember, the primary things that I want to shoot are galaxies, um, galaxies, star clusters and planetary nebula. So let's look at what some of these would look like. Let me go down here and let's pick out um, the triangulum or I'm sorry, not the triangulum, the dumbbell nebula. OK, if I add that to the view, that's going to be nicely framed. That's going to look good inside of this square. So right away, I thought, OK, that looks pretty good. What about a, um, a, a, a galaxy? Now, again, we're shooting normal size galaxies here, not the Andromeda. 
This is M33. That's actually a large galaxy, but it frames up very nicely. What about a star cluster? If I go down here and let me pick out, um, let me just pick out the Beehive cluster. Once again, uh, maybe uh, the BI cluster, BI cluster is a little bit more spread out, maybe a little bit too large for this, but other star clusters are going to fade in real well. Let's look at M13. M13 is going to frame up very nice. This is a globular. So right away, I began to look, and, and after I compared everything and put it all together, I decided the 533 is my best option. So for me, after I got it and started looking at it, the thing that I, I care most about, more than the statistics, more than anything else, are what do the pictures look like, okay? I've already shown you that there's no amp glow, right? I've shown you there's no amp glow in this camera. But let's look at some of the pictures that I've got. These are just some of my first pictures. This is the first image that I took. This is M13. This is one hour's worth of data. Um, shot with my Celestron 6 SCT. Now, I shot this at 140 gain, and that's probably a little bit too much. I probably should have shot this at unity gain, which is 100, but right away, you can see something. I love the color sensitivity in this camera. You can see, uh, if I zoom in there a little bit, you can see the different color stars. I've got blue, I've got orangey stars, I've got the white stars. You can see here, I don't know how well it's coming out in this picture, but you can see the propeller here, this little X shape in um, M13. If I would have shot this at Unity Gain, that would have came out much better. But overall, for a first night and a first image, I went, wow, that looks great. The other thing about it, for just one hour of data, there's hardly any noise at all in this picture. This processed beautifully when I went to picture. So that's my first image I took. That's M13. Let's look at another one. This is the Ring Nebula. This is three hours of data captured on a night uh, just a few uh, a week or so ago. And you can see this really processed up nice. And, and, and what's most amazing about this particular picture is about a quarter of the subs, about a quarter way through my imaging um, uh, run, my uh, filter drawer slipped out a little bit. And so uh, if you looked at the individual subs for this, some of the subs have this terrible gradient that goes right through the middle of the picture. And it was a result of the filter drawer sliding about halfway out and letting some light off my porch come in. But after I processed it and put it together, it came out beautifully. Look, you can see uh, beautiful colors that came out. This is a very, very sensitive camera. You can see the, here the star at the center of M57. And that's just three hours worth of data. That's all that is. And again, um, I, I was amazed. It came out really, really well. This is the favorite. Uh, that I did. Now, with that last one, that was shot with the Celestron 6 SCT, the 533, and I had the Optolong L Pro uh, light pollution filter in it. I took that light pollution filter out and put in the L Enhance, which is a um, uh, which allows me to separate the L out and do narrow band imaging. This is probably the favorite picture that I've, I've ever taken so far. I love this picture. This is the Dumbbell Nebula, and I processed this in sort of a faux Hubble palette, and I love it. Look at what happened. This is a very sensitive camera. Look at the blue, beautiful blues and oranges that came out in this thing. That thing is gorgeous. That is five hours worth of data shot with a Celestron 6 SCT, the 533, with the L, the L Enhance uh, filter from Optolong. And I processed it out in Astro Pixel Processor, and this thing came out incredibly well. So the next night, after I shot this and processed it, I thought, man, that looks really great. I decided to do a little bit of lunar imaging. And here's one of the images that I took. This is... Um, uh, what I did was I shot 1,500 frames, and um, I, I did narrow the uh, uh, the um, uh, field of view down a little bit using the um, region of interest uh, feature in SharpCap. Kind of focused in here, and um, 
man, I love it. It came out really well. So for lunar imaging, this thing works really good. For deep sky, for uh, narrow band imaging, everything worked really, really good. Now what I want to do is go over and I want to show you the project that's not quite finished yet. But what I'm going to do is show you some uh, footage of some capture that I was doing with this camera to show you the difference between a three-minute sub and a five-minute sub on the um, uh, the veil neb or the uh, crescent nebula. And then I want to show you just three hours worth of data on the crescent nebula and just again show you how incredible this camera is. So stick around. I want to show you a little bit of the capture video here so you can get a feel for what this camera is like to use at night. All right, just to uh, kind of give you a comparison here, I'm shooting the Crescent Nebula tonight. I've got the Celestron 6 SCT with the 6 point, uh, 0.63 focal reducer on the ZW0533. This is my first uh, kind of test shot. This is a 180 second uh, sub. And this looks pretty good. I've got the L Enhance filter in, and you can see a little of the detail in the Crescent Nebula, I'm sure. If I took a whole bunch of pictures and stacked them, uh, I get a lot more detail out. I'm going to shoot a 300 second um, sub, and we'll see how that looks. You can see here my guiding's pretty good. For the Celestron AVX mount, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'm staying down around... Um, 0.5 uh, to 0.7 uh, total RMS. I'm happy with that. Um, uh, that's about as good as I'm going to get with the uh, with the with the AVX. So we'll wait here just about a minute. Uh, you can see I've got this set up so that my I'm shooting at 100 gain. Um, I've got the um, offset set at 50, and um, so uh, we'll see how this looks here in just a couple of seconds. Um, uh, I don't know what else I could tell you about this camera. Overall, I've been pretty impressed with it. You'll notice here that uh, the chip, tip, chip, chip temperature is uh, minus 9.8 degrees. Uh, I'm aiming for minus 10 degrees. Um, it's a pretty humid night. Not super, super hot, but um, um, I probably will bounce around uh, 9, 10 degrees uh, below uh, zero on my uh, uh, on my uh, cooler. I've noticed that the 533 struggles with this this very humid weather that we're having right now. Now granted it got up to you know 92 this afternoon. It is probably right now it says 75 on my little thermometer but it's actually probably a little warmer than that. That's Paducah, uh, Kentucky and uh, we live across the river and it's probably about uh, uh, it's probably closer to 80 here where I'm at right now. So you can see it uh, can struggle a little bit sometimes to keep it cool. But, um, okay, there's the, five, there's the uh, five minute sub. And I don't see a, a lot of difference on it. Maybe a little bit more brightness out here. I think I'm going to go ahead and set up and shoot. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll probably just go ahead and shoot the three minute subs. That way I'm not putting quite as much stress on my camera cooler tonight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up an imaging. Uh, uh, sequence and uh, we'll get started on it and then we'll see how the results come out. Okay, uh, clouds moved in that night and I didn't get to shoot my full imaging run. I'm going to try to finish that off tonight, but I want to show you just three hours of data that I collected and I've already done the stack. What I've done is separate out the HA and the O3 data and I want to just show you very quickly what this looks like when I combine it. I'm here in Astro Pixel Processor. I'm in Tools. I'm going to go down to Combine RGB. I'm going to select HOO1 which is Hydrogen, Oxygen, Oxygen and I'm going to go down and I'm going to select my channels. This is my Hydrogen channel. Okay and then I'm going to go ahead and select my Oxygen channel and I just want to show you this because this blows my mind. This is just three hours worth of data, okay? With no other processing, I'm just putting the two, um, you know, integrations together. Cal hit calculate, nothing else done, and look at that. That, it blows me away. This would, this would be the best 
image of the crescent nebula that I've ever taken without doing anything else to it. If I zoom in here just a little bit, look, a little bit of noise in the picture, but not a lot. And to be honest with you, um, another two hours, three hours worth of data, there's going to be hardly any noise in this picture at all. Um, now, by the way, I stacked this with uh, 20 darks, 20 flats, 20 dark flats, like I always do. And this is about uh, three hours worth of, of uh, lights that I captured. You can see around the edge of it here, I've got a little bit of that oxygen data showing up. Again, this would, uh, with a little bit more integration time and working on the processing and bringing it out. If I click on saturation here, that's not even with the, if I bring out the saturation a little bit, you can see. But look, look how, how well this camera captures. You can see the little filaments inside of this nebula. And again, this is raw. There's, I haven't done anything else to it. No noise reduction, no, uh, you know, no playing around with it at all. I have not adjusted the curves. I've not gone in and done anything to it. This is just the combination of the stacked data. And you can see this camera really looks good. So let's talk very quickly about what I like about this camera and then what I don't like about this camera. 